Hey everyone, it's Joseph Zabrowski. I just want to say uh, thank you to everybody who prayed for my dad. I'm doing this video to share with you what I what I believe is a miracle. Very clearly, I believe is a miracle. <laughs> it's, it's it's like answer to prayer. Um, I saw it practically overnight, and um, so I just want to say thank you to you guys who prayed. And um, I want to tell you a little story here. Then hope to shed some light on hospice um and god in miracles okay <clears throat> so here we go um my dad is 85 years old and um up until about a week ago he has been you know doing kind of fine he lives in assisted living and um you know he's taken care of really well their family's always around him and um Everything's been going really well. So now about a week ago, he, in the morning, he wasn't responsive. And this has happened various times in the past. Now, now before I continue with the story, let me give you some background information. And this is part of the reason I'm doing this video, um, hospice. Okay, now, before I started looking into hospice, I thought hospice was a great organization. Okay, and I thought it was, it was there could only be good said about hospice. So... Um, you know, hospice came into our realm when my dad um, was in this assisted living, and they did it by, um, because, you know, my mom and dad come from that generation of really frugal, thrifty type people, right? <laughs> and, and so um, the head nurse at the assisted living facility that we're at, she's always in there promoting hospice and oh you can get free this free that everything's free you know like uh, wheelchairs and anything that you need is for free so of course my mod just totally lights up to that right and um, even though they're very well off <laughs> but that's just you know who they are they're from that generation thriftiness and frugality is in their blood so um, so at any rate, my mom jumps on it, and of course, whenever you take the money or you take whatever they have to give, now you have to sign a contract and adhere to <clears throat> their, um, their agenda. Now, um, if you're not aware of it, I've done the research, and it's just common knowledge if you do the research yourself, but I'm doing this video just to share with you to ho hopefully help other people, okay? So um, what I've learned in my research is that hospice works with Medicare and Medicaid, okay? In other words, our government. And hospice is a great tool for our government so that they, the government can save money because the quicker older people can go to their demise and, and be dead, then the less money the government has to pay on Medicare and Medicaid. And that is a fact, my friends, okay? So hospice is in there trying to bring people to their end as quickly as they can. Of course, they're not going to say that up front. Now, this is directly in line with something that I've been researching for many years, and I do videos on it on a regular basis, and it's called eugenics. Another name for eugenics is population control. The biggest, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, the so-called world rulers, the establishment in the world, the oligarchy, which is a group of billionaires who control the world, and many of them are very demonic, they have what's called the eugenics agenda, where they believe that the population should be about, you know, uh, a billion, where the population is presently between seven to eight billion in the world. So one of the ways that they, um, they, yeah, they use numerous means, they're the they're promoters of abortion and so forth. One of the ways that they, they promote, you know, population control is through hospice, one of the many ways. All right, so, <clears throat> so... That agenda is running through hospice, <clears throat> and hospice always, <clears throat> on its face, they always bring forth these sweet, beautiful little women on the face to be the representatives and speak nicely, and, oh, we're just trying to bring comfort to the end. But I can tell you from the very beginning, when my dad got into the assisted living, hospice was there trying, they're trying to promote that he's only going to live for six months, and let's just get, just, you know, brainwash you that that's the way that it is, because that's what they want, okay, <clears throat> for the reasons that I just stated. So we, we went back and forth. We had a lot of arguments up front, and I let them know that I know who they are. And whenever I would tell them that, they would kind of uh, clam up and look fearful and um, kind of look at me like I'm the enemy. All right. Now, of course, I have a family that basically is conventional family, and 
you know, they just go along with status quo. Um, they put many in these, these hospitals, like I said, the, the front people in these hospice organizations are always these sweet little women who are, you know, they bring forth God and everything, and my mob buys right into it, of course. And, um, and so here we are in this situation with my dad. Let's, I'm going to get back to where I left off earlier. My dad, you know, one morning he wasn't responding, and this has happened in the past. And so immediately hospice comes in, and I didn't even know what was going on at the time. And I get a call from my mother that she's crying that your dad's on his last leg. It's just like out of the blue, right? And because hospice told them that, that oh, yeah, he's just he's moving into his death phase, and it's time to, you know, get ready, prepare for it. So we're going to make it comfortable for him. So, you know, in the past, hospice had, had just wanted, like, from the point that my mom signed the contract with hospice, they wanted to give him morphine. There was nothing wrong with him. He was just in his wheelchair, and they wanted to give him morphine. I mean, I was like, there's no way you're giving him morphine. I mean, he's not experiencing any pain. So we went back and forth, and then we finally got him off of morphine. They wanted to give him these other drugs to help him, you know, die more quickly, and we said no to that. And my mom was on board with that. <clears throat> So now, but this little, this little thing here at the end came out of the blue. My dad was doing good up until about a week ago. He had this morning, and now they turn this, they step by, you know, they take one little thing and they try to make it multiply. So, so they immediately put my dad on morphine, and I was like, what are you doing? And um, the nurse explained, well, he was breathing really deeply, and I didn't see my dad re breathing like quickly, I should say, rather than deeply, quickly. You know, just like he was on a treadmill, he was, like he was running, you know. And we had to slow down his breath, breath rate. Um, and the morphine is not only for pain, but it helps bring down your breath rate. And I said, okay, that sounds reasonable. I can go along with it. So we're just giving him really small amounts. But I never, frankly, I never saw him breathing really quickly. Okay. Point is that I'm trying to make here is that they use all this rationale to try to get you to their objective, which is getting rid of your loved ones. Okay. That's what they want to do. And, I, and if you don't believe me, I encourage you to research it. I'm giving you firsthand experience here, okay? So, so um, you know, he's taking the morphine. Now he's in bed. He's in bed for, um, well, he's been in bed for like the last four days. The last three days he's just been laying there like a corpse. Hasn't moved a limb. Has been barely able to even talk, okay? And I just had an eerie feeling about the whole thing, you know, because it just didn't make any sense. So a couple of nights ago, I've been spending the night there and praying for my dad and stuff. And um, so the first night that I was there, this nurse comes in who takes care of him like every night. And um, I was explaining the situation to her and I said, well, what do you think about hospice? You know, and she's like, I don't agree with him. And I said, why? And she said, well, you know, it's because... Hospice is, you know, nurses like us, we're, like I'm with your dad, you know, five to six days a week, every night. I'm with him every single night. I know his cycles. I know his ups and downs. And right now he's just going through a down period. That's how he is. It's very cyclical. He goes through a down period and then he gets his strength back and he gets back to an up period. And, um, you know, and, and I explain, you know, they're not giving him any food. And that's what hospice tries to do. They, they try to get to the place where you're not, you're, your loved one is not getting any food or getting any, or if, you, if he gets any water, it's only at, like on a little sponge. They immediately want to put him into death mode. They're the death star, you guys, okay? And so my dad's like getting a little water through a sponge like when Jesus was on the cross and they gave him the vinegar sponge, you know? <clears throat> and so, and then, and then on top of it, they tell us, well, don't stick that sponge in your dad's mouth because he could bite it and he could choke on it. Meanwhile, they're bringing him to his death like because they're starving him to death and in, in, um, dehydrating him so that he's going to die more quickly. Keep in mind, my dad and many old people are in very fragile situations. Their bodies are very fragile, so it doesn't take much to bring them down. And that's exactly what they want. Okay, so so she's like, I'm telling her what's going on. She's like, oh, no, come on, let's, we'll, I'll, I'll take care of that right now. And I'm gonna, let's give him some water. So she gets in there with the sponge, and she's sticking it right into his mouth. My dad's like sucking on it like a bird. He wants the water so bad, he's, he's totally dehydrated. 
And so he takes in a bunch of water and they said, oh, I'll get him some yogurt. You know, that's soft and like pudding. And so she's, she gets him the yogurt and, and hospice's big thing is, well, you don't want to feed him anything because he could aspirate. That's their big word, aspirate. He could choke on it and he could die. Well, you know what? He's going to die in a couple of days if you don't feed him anyways. So what's the big deal? But that's their, that's their facade. That's what they do, you guys. So... So um, she's like, ah, no big deal. This, he, believe me, I know your dad. So she, she gives him the, the yogurt. And my dad, you know, he starts coughing a little bit. And she just pats on his chest real natural. She's totally natural. This nurse is phenomenal. And he gets down the yogurt. And he's like, you can tell he's like, he's starting to get some energy. And all of a sudden, he starts talking. He hadn't talked in like three days. Okay. And the same nurse told me that she fed him a sandwich a day before without them knowing about it, okay? And so I'm all excited. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. My dad's talking. He hasn't talked for like three days. And, um, and so, I, I, you know, the night goes by, the morning comes, and the head nurse comes in, and I tell her. I was really excited. Man, this nurse is phenomenal. She, was, she, get, she knew exactly what to do. My dad was talking, and she's like, what? He, who, who was it? What, what nurse? And I said, well, what do you mean? You're not, she's not going to get in trouble from feeding my dad. She, you're not supposed to do that. He could aspirate and he could choke. And so I ended up telling her and, and then I, um, I knew that she was going to probably, you know, bite into her. And so the next night I saw that nurse and I, 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 you know, went up to her and I told her, did you get, get in trouble for doing that? She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, that's BS. And I, Told her the whole thing that I was praising her and everything, and she understood. And um, so it's like they're all on the same team, you guys, hospice. And, um, and so they're, they continually don't want to feed them. They want to kill them, okay? And my dad, so, so okay, here, now here's, we're going to get back to the prayer part. All right, so, <clears throat> um, so last night, um, I went to adoration and then I felt like God was saying, "Let's get, get over to your get over to your dad there, let's go." And so I went over there and I I started praying for my dad. Now um, it was late at night; nobody was around except that one nurse. And um, <clears throat> now let me give you a little background on my dad. My dad was born and raised a Christian, but he totally fell away because of things in his life. I mean, all of his siblings were died before him and. He lost his mother and father at a really, when, you know, he was 18 years old. My dad has been independent his whole life because, because, you know, he never had anybody. I mean, he lost everybody. He lost his whole family, and I think he had, he's had anger toward God. And as a result, he kind of has, like, mocked the whole, like, being a Christian and everything over the years. He says he believes in a higher power, but he doesn't really believe in Jesus Christ, that Jesus is, is real and everything. We've had numerous talks and debates about it. So, um... You know, I've been praying for my dad for many, many years, and one of my prayers has been that I get to see my dad as a Christian man. You know, that's one of the things that I wanted. I was just asking God personally, I'd like to see my dad live as a Christian man one day. i just like to see it with my own eyes. And um, so anyways, um, so last, be, uh, before last night, you know, I sent out a prayer request to our Merciful Heart Prayer Group, which is attached to our church, and some beautiful woman in there. And they immediately, you know, said they would pray, and I thank them, and I want to say thank you, you guys, for praying. I uh, appreciate you deeply. And, um, and then I sent out, I contacted 20 different ministries in a span of about two hours and put in prayer requests to like 20 big prayer ministries, asking that they pray for my dad's salvation. So... I went over to see my dad that night, yes, last night, and I then started praying for him. And, you know, my dad, in the past, he would never allow me to lay hands on him because he didn't believe in any of that. Well, now he's in a position in bed, bedridden, where there's nothing he could do about it, right? So I'm laying hands on my dad, and I'm lifting my other hand up to God. There's a cross above his bed with Jesus on it. And I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will, f will fill my dad's heart, mind, body, and soul, and I'm laying my hands, and I lay my hands on his, his head, Please, Lord, fill his mind. My dad has dementia, and give him a new mind. You know, um, you know, give him the mind of Christ, and um, fill him with your Holy Spirit. Fill your Holy Spirit in his in his heart, and his mind, and his body, and his soul. And so I pray for an hour or two, 
um, as, as the Holy Spirit led. And then, you know, that was it. And then, you know, I went, I went to bed there and I, I slept and, um, oh, and then I, we have this cross that it's on a desk next to my dad's bed and it's like about that long, that wide. It's a gold cross with Jesus on it and I placed it on my dad's heart. And he's in a laying down position so the cross is just laying on his heart the whole night and all day today. So in the morning, the nurse is in there, that same nurse, and I hear my dad talking to her. And my dad, and she's like, she's like, I'm asking that, I, you know, I asked that guy would give him, you know, a new body and everything and bring life to him through his through God's Holy Spirit and um and my she's like stretch I want you to stretch and and she he's talking he, she, he's talking to the nurse he's and she's saying like how do you feel he says I feel great <laughs> he can hardly talk but he's, he's you know he's, he's I feel great and she's talking to him and then later on my mom comes in and um he's talking to my mom and I'm seeing, I'm just sitting there laying on the couch there and watching all of it. And, um, and my dad, you know, he's moving his, his arms and he mo he's moving his legs. He tells my mom that he loves her. And, and you guys, it's a miracle. That in itself is a miracle. A day before, for three to four days previous, he, w he did not move. And he, he, he barely said a word. He, all he was doing was looking up when his eyes were open. He was silent. This was after 20 ministries prayed, Merciful Heart Prayer Group prayed, and I prayed. Literally day and night. So today, I mean, my dad, he looks great. I mean, his face looks like a 50-year-old man, okay? It's because he's been fasting for four days and drinking a little bit of water. His skin is tight. And it's just like he looks phenomenal. His eyes this morning were shining. He had, had a light to his eyes. And um, and then hospice comes in. And they're like, of course, they bring in their sweet little beautiful woman who's the facade. And she's like, oh, yeah, he, this is it. This is the end. And, um, and my mom is still buying into it. And I've had conversations with my mom, my niece by my side, both telling her, okay, you know, we should at least get him, not, get him an IV. And if you tell hospice about giving him an IV, they're like, oh, no, they have the rationale why you don't want to get him an IV, too. They have rationale for everything because their objective is to kill him so that they don't have to pay, so that the government has to pay as little Medicare and Medicaid costs as possible. And that is a fact. I'm doing this video so that you understand, to share this truth so that if, you're, if your parents are older and you're in a similar situation, I urge you to know what's going on because hospice is not on your side. Of course, they're going to make it look like they're on your side, okay? But their objective is not life. Know this, okay? God is life. God promotes life in everything. He puts life in our hearts, all right? He naturally does that. And that's why a person, every person of God, we fight. We want to live because life is in our heart. But hospice, in a very simplistic manner, they do not promote life. They promote death. Their first objective is to bring this person to death. Okay? That's what they want. And they use it all under the guise of, well, we're making him comfortable. And comfortable is what it's all about. They just use that, oh, we just want him to be comfortable. We'll give him a morphine. And the nurse is like, oh, this is what we like. He's comatose. This is what we like. And, you know, you put anybody on drugs and they'll be comatose. Right? So, on the right drugs. So that is it, my friends. I want to thank everybody who prayed because I literally saw a miracle. And I would love for my dad, um, you know, I thought last night I prayed that, I prayed that, um, that my dad, <clears throat> you know, that he would, you know, that prayer that I get to see him as a Christian man. And I just asked God, you know, even if it's for however amount of time you want, short time, that's fine. And um, I thought maybe, maybe God would be doing that. Maybe that's what God's doing. But then, of course, hospice came in, and my mother, once again, wants to just go along with killing him. <clears throat> and, um, and I've told her once again, and I said, that's the last time I'm telling you. It's the last time I'm telling you. All right. 
you know, I explained it from a perspective of <clears throat> Christianity and God. My mother's a Christian, and um, so she should understand that. But at any rate, I hope <clears throat> you'll take the information that I just shared with you, and I hope it will uh, lead you in the right direction. And I hope that um, you'll understand that prayer <clears throat> is real. I mean, we went from night to day. My dad was talking this morning and moving. When three to four days previous, for three to four days previous, he was a corpse. And that changed because of prayer. Okay? So that is it, my friends. Thank you for your prayers. Take care and God bless.